Hello everybody, my name is Einar Stensson and I work at the Department of Sociology at the Stockholm University. Uh, now all of these tutorials that are going to follow this one uh, are basically adapted for our students that are studying this course in Stockholm here at the university. So I made this video to give everybody else here on YouTube uh, a perspective on what we're, what we're doing and what is sociology and where, where are we coming from when we're uh, investigating the statistical methods that we're going to use here. So I made this little introduction video for all you guys who are watching uh, this on YouTube. <clears throat> well basically when a sociology sociologist approaches um, reality or the social world so to speak um, she will uh, define it in, in terms of different actions, uh, a geography perhaps, symbols, and this could be clothes or other types of signs that we have to express our identity, events, um, either s things like uh, friendship or maybe events like becoming unemployed, etc. Uh, or even people, and people have different characteristics, so it can be uh, people based on gender or ethnicity or, or income and something. And these can, of course, be connected in different ways. So they don't don't think of this as as um, exclusive categories. Think of them sort of just like a theoretical conception. And all of these things will, in turn, define our field of investigation. So when I'm when I'm approaching reality, I'm saying, okay, well, I have to define it somehow. So if I want to talk about unemployment. I would have to define it in terms, I could talk about the event of becoming unemployed and the consequence that it would have. I could talk about who becomes unemployed and why. Uh, I could talk about what kind of actions uh, lead that lead to the fact that uh, you become unemployed or what actions are created by unemployment. This could be some of the consequences of unemployment, for example. Or the geography, I could say I'm in investigating unemployment in a certain place or city or, or something like that. And also symbols, like what are the symbols of unemployment or perhaps poverty, etc. Uh, in this tutorial, we're going to take the dancing as a little happier example. Uh, and, and I uh, enjoy Lindy Hop and, and Tango is a really great dance too. So uh, I'm just going to take this as an example. Um, Facebook, which is a so very social field, so it's very interesting for sociologists to be. Um, we can find a lot of different variables here that we could use in, a, in an investigation. Um, for example, we have symbols here, uh, we have different clothes that depend on gender, for example. Uh, we have that they're dancing, we have the fact that they're holding a special position which might symbolize something. Um, and we have, you know, there might be more actually than the ones I've located. I just took a couple for example. There might be people, these are people dancing together. Uh, these people do have different characteristics, they might come from different contexts. Or, uh, and they are conducting different actions. Maybe it's different types of moves, or maybe they are in a competition, not a competition. Maybe this is a competition and this is a social dance. Who knows? And also the geography of the whole thing. We have, to begin with, we're in Facebook, so that's a ge geographical location. We're in a Facebook group for Tango, uh, and we are talking about the, the people that are using Facebook and talking about it. Uh, and we're, you might, for example, collect data from the wall as well, or maybe from the picture library. So the geography of your investigation is, is a way of, of limiting your field. So what you do is you take all of these, you take the people, actions, events, etc., and you operation, operationalize them into categories or variables, as we're going to call them from now on. And they're defined on nominal, ordinal, interval, and racial scale. Now, what, what are the definition of these? Well, nominal scale is non-quantitative measures, and they Usually when you're coding them in Excel, you code them as 1 or 0. Uh, this could be, for example, that you're employed or not employed, that you're male or that you're female. You know, it might be a bunch of different things. But the point is that you can't rank them. You know, you can't say that uh, employed is above not employed or male is above female or vice versa. Uh, it's just different categories, but you can't relate them to each other quantitatively. Uh, on ordinal scale, well, you do have categories as in nominal scale, but this time you can rank them. Uh, and you can rank them based on some kind of criteria. Um, for example, working class, upper class, that's based on economics, or labor indexes, which is classed on uh, different, you know, subjective scales. So what what uh, uh, ranks different uh, occupations get in the labor market? In Sweden, we have the SEE index, for example, that we use, and that uh, is different from these uh, two categories in that there's no information about the distance between the distance between the categories. We just know that we can rank them. And they're usually coded as discrete values for this reason, like 1, 2, 3, etc. We don't know exactly how far in, you know, 
in theory, the distance is between one, two, between working class and upper class. We just know that we can order them. Then comes interval scales. Uh, we have ranked categories, as in the ordinal scale, but this time we know the distance between the categories. So we can actually code them using decimal points. Um, one classic example, which you'll find all over the internet if you Google it, is uh, temperature, where uh, you can't say that uh, 80 plus degrees is the double of minus 40 degrees because it's placed on a minus scale. So we know the, the distance between each temperature, but we, we don't know uh, the absolute point of zero, even though there is an absolute zero for temperature, but that's expressed in minus. So that's why people use that as an interval scale example. And then there's racial scale. It has everything all of these have. Um, it is ranked. It has distance between each, each category that's that's measurable. Uh, so it's, it's usually coded as a continuous value with decimal points, but it also has a zero point. And one classic is H. You can't be minus one years old. You are either, you begin at zero years old, so to speak, and then you get older. Another one is income. Um, you don't get paid minus uh, 500 kroner for your job or whatever. So you, there's an absolute zero point there. I should mention also that take these, exam these examples, you know, you could, you could code age in a different scale. You could put age in, um, well, you could put it in nominal scale if you just, change the way you defined age. You could put working in upper class in ratio scale if you changed it to some kind of economic uh, measurement, etc. So uh, we can actually move these around depending on how we define them. But the point, so the, the important point is not which uh, social phenomenon is placed in which scale. The important points are these, ca these um, characteristics of each scale. That's what you need to learn. This isn't as important because you can actually change the scale of things. <coughs> And when you've uh, identified your field, you found a bunch of variables that you're interested in, you start formulating a model. I might, for example, want to compare tango dancing to Lindy Hop. So I would take my variables here. I have gender, for example, which is at a nominal scale. I have the number of dancing friends they have, which is a racial scale. I would have their identity, which could be categorical or ordinal scale so to speak, or, or the dancing roles, which is a nominal scale. And I would use different types of correlation measures to correlate them to see how are they linked together. And finally, I could even put them all in the same measure as an index or something, and then compare um, tango dancing to Lindy Hop for a different value. Or I could compare the correlations in, in, within the dances between the dances. So I could compare the, um, the identity of tango dancers to the identity in Lindy Hop and the role that um, that gender has to your identity in the different dances. So this is the way a sociologist thinks. We categorize things and then we operationalize them into measurable variables and then we correlate them. So this is kind of a, an example of what the scientific process for a sociologist might look like. This is just one example. This is a big issue in sociology. People actually like spend their entire careers trying to figuring, figure this stuff out. But for this course, I've, I've formulated a simple little model of it. It begins here at your pre-understanding. You have an idea about what you want to investigate. We all grow up in society, so we all have ideas about society. We all have inspirations and experiences that guide us and, and guide our interest and what we're actually interested in investigating. Uh, then we formulate a theory. Um, either we do this by ourselves uh, based on just data that would be called grounded theory, for example. But the uh, most common in quantitative methods is that you uh, have a theory. You read up on Marx or you read up on Weber or Bourdieu or some um, guys with beards, <laughs> usually. Uh, but, you know, or feminist theories or whatever. You know, you have different types of theories that you could use. Um, and then you use them to formulate a hypothesis about the the thing, the field that you're interested in investigating. And then you start building your model. So at this point, you start creating variables that you want to use. So I have different variables. Um, in our case, we had gender, we had dancing roles, etc. Uh, and then you start correlating these variables. And here are some of the correlation measures that we're going to be using. I should mention now before I move on is that these, this order of doing things isn't always the way it's done. Sometimes you move all the way through here, you start correlating your variables, and you realize, oh my gosh, my model is so wrong. I have to redesign it and then correlate. Or maybe I 
uh, correlate them and I see that my hypothesis is all screwed up or maybe even my theory. So sometimes you go all the way here and then you go back a step and then start again. Same thing for testing hypotheses. When you test a hypothesis, you get an idea of what you've been doing and you have to move back and change. And you move around in this circle, around and around and around all the time. And the point here is that it's okay to do this, but you really do have to me mention it when you're writing your paper or your article. You have to be clear and honest in your research process about what you're doing. So this area that's highlighted in red is the area um, that we're going to talk about in this course. We're going to start with the scales of variables. Uh, and I should mention that I'm not going to talk about everything in these tutorials. Some of the stuff is taken up at the lectures we have here at the university, so be careful. But most of, most of the stuff is discussed in the tutorials. Um, we're going to correlate and we're going to use these measures here. Uh, we're going to test some hypotheses uh, using probability theory, sampling, the normal distribution, and student t distribution. And all of this is sort of the part of the scientific process that we're discussing here. So these the pre-understanding part, the formulating a theory and formulating a hypothesis, well that's what you have your other sociological courses for. And they are included in the basic level here at the Stockholm University. So uh, I encourage you to start studying with us if you want to know more about these parts. But this is what we're going to talk about here in this methods course at the, in statistics. And uh, basically that's it for this introduction video for you guys at YouTube. If you're interested in starting studying at the Stockholm University, you could always uh, just Google Stockholm University and start searching around. Um, our department is called the Department of Sociology. So if you're interested in, si in social science and the way we work, uh, I really do recommend that, that this program that I'm working at right now, uh, which is called uh, Samhällsanalys, uh, which is uh, sort of a, it's a program designed for people who are really interested in methods and who are really interested in conducting research. So that's what this tutorial is based upon. The idea that we're going to conduct research and understand society using scientific processes. So I wish you good luck in these tutorials. I hope you have a, real, a lot of fun. Don't hesitate to comment and come constructive criticism because I will change the, the videos if something is wrong or if uh, perhaps you can see some improvement or if the sound is bad or whatever. I'll try to work with you guys and, and make sure this, these tutorials are as good as possible. Um, so uh, have a really great day. That's all for me in this tutorial, and I hope to see you in the next tutorial. See you later.